Welcome to today's training. The purpose of this training is to talk to you about the CASP ELA performance task. Within the context of this sample, I'm introducing you to the fifth grade model. However, the strategies that are suggested in today's training can apply to all grade levels that are testing for the CASP end of year state test. You'll notice on the left hand side of the document that you see the text that is supposed to be read by the student. Up at the very top, the instructions are very easy to find. I recommend that students pause to fully understand the expectations of the assignment before they continue. Because when it comes to, oh dear teacher, what am I supposed to highlight? The information that you find in the instructions are guiding tools to help you determine what is important. The next thing I'm going to talk about is purposeful highlighting strategies. In this sample, I am going to choose yellow for all of what I call my golden nuggets that I'm going to find inside of article or source number one. The key details that I have determined, hmm, I would like to use that in my essay later, or hmm, that's a really good talking point. I'm going to cast a shadow on the text. I'm going to use what's classified as a right click feature on the computer. If I'm using a Windows based computer, I'm going to click on the right side of the trackpad. If I'm using a Chromebook, I'm going to use two fingers on the trackpad in order for the highlighting menu to appear. You also have the stack of pancakes. You can use the stack of pancakes as well. Technically, it's called the menu button, but I like calling it the stack of pancakes. As I scoot down, you'll notice that when I arrive at source two, I have changed my highlight color. Now I've chosen yellow because it appears first in the drop down menu, and I've chosen orange because it appears second in the drop down menu. See how I'm on our article two and I'm using the second color? I'm going to use the third color for the third article. You don't have to use the exact same colors I have chosen in the order that I have selected. However, it's easy for my brain to remember the colors in order represent the articles in order. Never highlight the entire article. That's the equivalent of highlighting nothing. Nothing stands out. When I make it down to article three, I'm going to use those same purposeful highlighting strategies. But that time, once I have reached article three or source number three, I'm now going to use the third color from the drop down menu. I'm targeting key ideas within the text and I'm highlighting those so that my eyes can easily determine, oh, that's right, if I find something orange, that applies to article two. Oh, if I find something yellow, that's article one. It's designed to be a time saver. If you're haphazard or wayward or unstructured in your highlighting strategies, then it's just a mess of colors and you're not exactly sure what those colors mean. So this is one strategy designed to save you time. Once you have effectively highlighted all of the key details that you think are important in articles one, two, and three, feel free to scoot over to the next questions that you see on the right hand side. There's usually a table and a short answer question. Within the table, it's your job to pause carefully and evaluate whether or not talking point number one applies to article one, article two, article three, or a combination of those. Likewise, you'll need to determine if talking point number two applies to source number one, number two, number three, or a combination of these. Once you are clearly satisfied with your answer for this question, then go ahead and scoot to the next question. For some students, the short answer question will appear first, and that's okay. You can do the questions in an order that is most effective for you. In this space, I typically develop what I call sentence frames. I'm going to build those sentences before I even start to locate the answer. I'm going to use some guiding notes that are designed to help me so that I don't forget anything. And I'm actually going to use my keyboard to build a line in that space right here. Shift line, 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 line. About five lines is sufficient. Don't do 42, that's, that's way too large. And you're just gonna have to erase all of them. So put a line in there, letting your brain know 
there's something missing. You need to go back and find that golden nugget, like I called it earlier, that fantastic piece of information from the article, to then shape and sufficiently finish your sentence. I'm providing a skeleton or a thin model that guides my writing strategies with lines telling me that I'm not finished with my answer. I'm going to use the backspace button for each of those lines, and then I'm going to finish those sentences well after I've located that information inside of the text. This process might feel very familiar to you. Inside of your classroom, your teacher may have been teaching you about race strategies. This is where you restate the question, you answer the question, you cite the evidence from the article or articles, and then you explain what it means. You're probably familiar with this process already. When you are finished with these two questions, choose the next button on the top left in order to move on to the essay. All of the information on the left-hand side will continue with you. The instructions that you originally found and all of your highlighting should come with you. Notice how all of the golden nuggets in Source 1 are yellow, all of those golden nuggets in Source 2 are orange, and then once I get down to Source number 3, those items that I chose to highlight are green. I don't have to ask myself, hmm, what article am I in? Those colors clearly tell me which article I am presently in. Over on the right-hand side, I have clear instructions telling me exactly what I'm supposed to do in the essay space. In addition to that, I also have some key talking points that remind me what my teacher would tell me to do in a writing situation such as this. Lavender is the fourth color in the drop-down menu. I'm going to use lavender to highlight key talking points in the instructions so that my eyes are drawn to these key details. One thing that I want to mention to you, be careful that you fully understand the difference between remove highlight and reset highlight. Reset will take all of your hard work away. All of that highlighting is going to disappear. Remove allows you to specifically remove one piece of highlighting. So be careful that you know the difference between those two. Down here in the essay space, I am going to build an outline. Your teacher may have given you paper in order to build your brainstorm, your outline, and your rough draft. If your teacher has provided you with those resources, please use those resources well. If your teacher has explained to you that you're supposed to build your outline inside of this essay space, please do not forget that very important task. In this space, include those key five starting points, depending on your essay genre, of introduction, three main body paragraphs, and a conclusion. I'm going to come back into that outline and I'm going to provide myself with some reminders. I need a topic sentence, I need to bring my reader back to key source information, and I also need a transition sentence at a bare minimum. I'm not suggesting you should only have three sentences in your paragraph. I'm just putting these three key guiding tools to remind myself that I should not forget these. Once I have constructed the key talking points of my outline, I can then go back and build in each of those paragraphs specifically. I'm not going to build an entire essay in front of you right here. I'm just modeling what those strategies look like. In the next portion of the video, I'm going to talk to you about the Universal Notes tool. The Universal Notes tool is located right up here. It's available to you when you're working on questions one and two, and they travel with you when you scoot over to question three or question four, depending on what grade you're in. The essay would be the last question, even if the number isn't exactly the same. Ultimately, these notes are traveling with you when you head over to the essay space. In here, I have typed out source number one, source number two, and source number three. Within those three spaces, I have also typed out some ideas that came to my mind while I was reviewing or doing my initial read of those three sources. If at any point I am putting a direct quote into my notes, I need to make sure that I include quotation marks. I don't want to forget that the words that I included in here came directly from that source or article. As I'm organizing this material, 
either on paper or here in the notes area. I'm able to use those when I move over to the essay space. The blue bubble on the bottom right allows you to adjust the size of the notepad and by clicking at the top of the notepad, you can drag and move the notepad to a space that's convenient for you. So if it's interfering with your ability to respond to a question, you can easily drag it out of the way. You can move it to a spot that is most efficient for you. Now my eyes can simultaneously view the notes and the essay space at the same time. At the bottom of the notepad space, you'll notice where it says save and close. Please remember to save those notes if at any point you pause or disengage from your testing experience. Those notes should return when you come back to the test at another time. The last item is the dictionary. I recommend that you use the dictionary as well as the thesaurus during your testing experience. The dictionary is designed to provide you with all possible definitions for a word. A thesaurus is designed to help you locate synonyms and antonyms. Synonyms represent words that are similar. Antonyms represent words that are opposite or different. Let's practice this strategy with the word luxury. I'm going to type the word luxury and then I'm going to click thesaurus. Right over here, after I click the thesaurus button, you'll notice down below that I have a list of synonyms and antonyms. Some of those synonyms include deluxe, lavish, opulent, or plush. Those are similar. However, some words that are different would be frugal, meager, spare, or thrifty. Those words are different. They don't mean the same thing. If I do not know what any of these words mean, I can simply click on any one of these words and it will take me to the definition of that specific word. I'm going to click on the word splendid. When I click on splendid, it's going to take me over here to that definition. As I scroll down, I can determine what that word means. Not only do I find the definition, I also find a list of synonyms and antonyms in this space as well. Feel free to use the dictionary and the thesaurus. Both of them are very helpful tools. Lastly, spell check is located right here. The button says A, B, C, check, kind of like spell check. Use this feature to double check your spelling before you submit your work. Thank you so much for paying attention to today's training and have a great day.